ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد بعد الله تقوا الله تقوا الله تعالى فارحموا على انفسكم بتقوى فقد جربتم عذاب الدنيا فما بالكم عن النار في الاخره قال تعالى يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم ان زلزله الساعه شيء عظيم My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to every nation a prophet and each one of them were tested by their nations. But the stories and the legacies that they leave behind remains as a lesson for mankind until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And we know that their deeds were accepted because people continue talking about these prophets and messengers even after they are long gone. And that's why we have his Khalil, Ibrahim alayhi salam, from the best of those who walked to this earth. He has left behind a story so powerful, so blessed, so beloved to Allah that rituals of Hajj have been established upon them. Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to follow his way. Ibrahim Ibrahim Khalil. My brothers and sisters, for every single age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen a group of people who will be upon Tawheed. And there's never been a group of people who are upon Tawheed, except that they were driven out by their own people. This means, my brothers and sisters, that Tawheed is a symbol. And through it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests. And through it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces. My brothers and sisters, he raised the house, alayhi salam, Ibrahim. He performed tawaf around the house. He stayed in the haram worshipping Allah. He made it as a place of itikaf, even though he was by himself, alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him, even though he was alone, showing us that tawheed and ikhlas and preparing in your return to Allah and pleasing him is more important than the whole dunya and whatever it contains. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, وَطَهِّرْ bayti." Prepare my house and purify it for those who perform tawaf even though he was standing by himself. For those people who stand at the house even though he was there by himself. And for those people who want to make ruku and sujood. His story of tawheed is blessed because it brought us the story and the rituals of the sa'i. His story is blessed and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It brought us a well which was dug by an angel. A well which water never becomes moldy. Its water is blessed and the Messenger of Allah called it a nourishment, feeding billions of people until this very day. In fact, my brothers and sisters, the whole of the Hajj and Umrah is connected to this man Ibrahim salam, and he also supplicated for it. It is the answer of his dua. He says, رَبَّنَا وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةٌ مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ As they were preparing and lifting the house and building it, him and his son, alayhim salam were supplicating to Allah. Our Lord, make us Muslims to you. And from our progeny, an ummah which will also be Muslim. وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا And teach us our rituals at this house. وَتُوبَ عَلَيْنَا And turn to us إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ تَوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ After they finished building the house, the black stone was sent down and the corner was then completed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded this man of Tawheed to make a call of an adhan to hajj, even though there was no one really over there. Make an adhan for hajj. وَأَذِّمْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, says, Ibrahim then asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can I make an adhan for hajj when all I see in front of me is a desert? No one will hear my voice, so how will it reach them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Ibrahim to make this adhan. And then he said to him, يَأْتُوكَ رِجَانًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ دَامِنٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيكٍ We will bring people coming from every single valley, walking, 
and some of them on modes of transportation coming from every single direction. So Ibrahim responded to the call of Allah and he stood on the maqam and he said, Ya Yuhun Nas, O mankind, your Lord has built this house so to come to pilgrimage towards it. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah says, the mountains lowered themselves. The mountains lowered themselves so that the voice of Ibrahim could reach all of the corners of the earth. The whole earth heard the voice of Ibrahim and even the rocks and the trees responded. Ibn Kathir goes on to say, now this is the origin of our response. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. In obedience at your service, our Lord, in obedience at your service, our Lord. Ibrahim salam went away and he used to return back visiting his son as he got older. And this then became one of the greatest trials that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to test him with. He returns back to Mecca and now he has an adult prophet son. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands to him to slaughter his own prophet son. After years of waiting patiently for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him children, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him to slaughter his eldest one in Mecca, a prophet's son, somebody who is beloved to him. Ibn Abbas anhuma explains the story to us and he explains to us what happened. Ibrahim alayhi salam speaks to his son Ismail and Ismail alayhi salam says, answer the call of your Lord, submit to him. If this is what he has told you to do, then you shall slaughter me. Ibrahim salam, was between Safa and Marwa and he was walking with his son Ismail and on the other side was Jibreel salam, in his human form, three pious men walking towards Mina to perform the slaughtering of Ismail salam. Ibn Abbas said, عَرَدَ لَهُ الشَّيْطَانِ عِنْدَ الْمَسْعَةِ The shaitan approached Ibrahim salam. What was he trying to do? He was trying to put him off. Ibrahim knew that nothing from this evil thing came of any good. So he started remembering Allah and the shaitan fled. Ibrahim salam is now walking with Ismail and Jibreel towards Mina, a place where the Hujjaj will begin to gather shortly. And as they approached Mina, ثم ذهب به جبرائيل إلى جمرة الأقبة When they reached the greatest, the biggest pillar which is there, which is known as جمرة الأقبة فعرض له الشيطان The shaitan came back. At that point, there is nothing there, it's just barren land. But that point where we see that people are going to pelt during the Hajj, the shaitan stood there calling Ibrahim, trying to put him off. Ibn Abbas anhuma, he said, Ibrahim picked up some pebbles and he started throwing it at the shaitan, mentoring the name of Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and the shaitan fled. My brothers and sisters, look at the power of Tawheed and the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The name of Allah is a protection. The name of Allah is a blessing. The name of Allah is a ruqya. The name of Allah is something that the shaitan cannot handle. So the shaitan fled and he came back. Now this is the second jamr. And he did the same thing. He picked up some pebbles. He mentions the name of Allah and he pelts the shaitan with it. And the shaitan flees. And as he is al-khannas, when the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, he flees. But when the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not mentioned, he comes back. So he came back for a third time. And Ibrahim alayhi salam pelted him for a third time. And this is how we have the Rami today. Why were they there? They were in Mina because Ismail was supposed to be sacrificed. So Ibrahim alayhi salam tells Ismail to lay on his right, facing the Qibla. فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَ وَتَلَّهُ الْجَبِينَ He's now on his right hand side and Ibrahim is looking over him and he has to slaughter his own son. Look at the submission and the power of Tawheed. Ismail says to his father, wait my father. 
Was he scared? No, he wasn't scared. He says, wait, my father. Ya abati, innahu laysa li thawb. I don't have any other garment except for the one that I'm wearing. Fakhla, hatta tukfini fi. Remove this shirt that I am wearing so that after I have been slaughtered, you have something to shroud me in. So Ibrahim removed the garment and he was about to slaughter his own son. But another call came from the Rabbul Alameen, the one who creates and the one who takes, the one who commands and the one whose dominion. And we called out, O Ibrahim. You have been truthful to the command that you have sought in your dream. And this is how we reward those who do good. You have passed and you are successful. Surely this was a great test for Ibrahim. But we have replaced it for you with the slaughtering of an animal and a sacrifice. Ibn Abbas he said, Ibrahim then turns around alayhi salam and he sees a ram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to slaughter this ram instead of his own son. And this now became the udhiya that is being practiced until Yawm al Qiyamah. My brothers and sisters, Ibrahim was the Imam of the Hunafa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him for a reason. And in a world which has forgotten Allah, the Hajj remains a symbol of Iman and Tawheed a symbol of submission, a symbol of unity. The Hajj teaches us how to accept the test that we have in the dunya and how to repel the shaitan from our lives. The Hajj teaches us how to attain the purification and forgiveness of our Lord, Subhanahu. The Hajj is about bringing conviction to the believer that all men, had they gathered to benefit themselves in the life of this dunya, they will not be able to benefit in the slightest and every single one of us are returning back to the Lord of all of the alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us within the context of hajj to prepare for your return. If the brothers can make space, there's people waiting at the back. If you can close the gaps. Alhamdulillah, ala ihsanih, wa shukru lahu ala tawfiqihi wa amtinanih, wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasoolah, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira. Amma ba'ad, my brothers and sisters, these days are the days of Hajj and they are the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And next week we have the day of Arafah, where the Hujjaj will stand on the night of Dhul Hijjah at Arafah. And it is so beloved to Allah that there is no day throughout the whole year that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees more from the fire except for the day of Arafah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends during the day. وَإِنَّهُ لِيَدْنُ he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets close to his creation. ثُمَّ يُبَاهِ بِهِمْ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Then he boasts about his servants to the angels. And he says, مَا أَرَادَ هَأُولَى What is it that they want? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will listen to the supplication of those people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive those people. And this is the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted for us all. Because he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that a person, if he fasts Yom Arafah, so Yom Arafah, you kafir sanatain madiyah wa mustaqbila. Even if you're not there at Hajj, by fasting this one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only will He forgive you of your sins, not only will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your dua, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply for you your reward just by simply fasting on that day and remembering Him. On this day, my brothers and sisters, of the day of Arafah, Iman is so apparent, it is so apparent throughout the whole earth, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wasallam said on the day of Arafah, that there is no day throughout the year except that shaitan is asghar, smaller than, than this day. Wala adhar, rejected, 
on the day of Arafah. ولا أحقر debased ولا أغيض منه يوم Arafah. No day that he is angered, belittled, rejected. All of his plans are nullified, like the day of Arafah that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given us. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, I highly recommend it for you to fast this coming Tuesday, which is the day of Arafah. But from the rulings of fasting the day of Arafah is that the correct view between the scholarly different opinions is that it is not allowed to combine your intentions on the day of Arafah. Arafah is a fasting which is sought in and of itself. So a person needs to fast the day of Arafah for the sake of Arafah and not for the sake of qada of something which is wajib. Also from the rulings of Arafah is that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's companions عنهم, they used to make takbir after every obligatory prayer from Salat al-Fajr until the 13th of Dhul Hijjah after Salat, until Salat al-Asr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to remember him on the appointed days and this is how the companions interpreted this ayah Abdullah ibn Masood and Ali and radiallahu anhum ajma'in and others from them is that they used to make the takbir generally without, throughout these first 13 days, but after every obligatory prayer, they used to make the takbir after every obligatory prayer. <coughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Also from the history and the ahkam during these days is the importance, as you have heard, of the udhiyah. And the correct view from the scholarly difference of opinion is that it is wajib for you to offer the udhiyah if you are able to do so. Also from the rulings of the Udhiya is that it's permitted for you to send it to another country if you are able to do so. But if you are able to do it in this country and eat from it and share and give in sadaqah, then this is better, of course. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا وَأَتْعِمُوا الْبَعِسُ الْفَقِيرِ And eat from it if you are able to do so and feed the poor and the needy and those people who will benefit from it. Also from the rulings of the Udhiyah, my brothers and sisters, is that if a person has intended to sacrifice an animal, it is not permissible for them to remove hair or nails or skin until the sacrifice has been completed. Not the day of Eid, until the sacrifice has been completed. So if you have sent it to another country, you have to wait to make sure that the sacrifice has been completed, and then you can remove hair, skin and nails, therefore. My brothers and sisters, the difference between our nation and all other nations is that the day of Eid comes after working hard in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't belittle these days which are beloved to Allah. They are very important to Him. Don't make them normal days with yourself when they are important with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for us a great reward if we were to take them seriously. And by following the sunnah of our messenger and the sunnah of the anbiya that came before, we can connect to them, the best of people, by following their rituals that they have left foot behind for us to follow. Allah sallallahu wa sallam wa ala ibn dhabihain and sallu bi huda ila jami'i thakadain qala ta'ala inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayu al-nadhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ala muhammad kama sallaita ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid Allahumma barik ala muhammad wa ala ala muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid Allahumma izz al-islam wa al-muslimin اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين ودمر عداء الدين يا رب العالمين اللهم أسلح بيوتنا وأسلح زوجاتنا اللهم أسلح بيوتنا وأسلح زوجاتنا اللهم اجنبنا أن نعبد الأسلام اللهم اجنبنا أن نعبد الأسلام اللهم اجنبنا أن نعبد الأسلام ربنا ربنا جلنا مقيم السلاة ومن ذريتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم أتي نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكها أنت وليها ومولاها يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أسلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا ترفة عين اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا وعاف مبتلانا وارحم ضعفنا بقوتك يا جبار يا عزيز ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة من قيل عذاب النار إباد الله اذكروا الله اذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنعون Thank you for that. I'm done. Yeah.